When making a D&D &D character, do you go for the ultra unique? Do you develop a fascinating and detailed backstory just waiting to be mined for goodies in an upcoming campaign? Do you find the core options too limiting and push your DM to allow more? If all of this is true, you just might be a special snowflake. Or your character, rather. Let's talk. All right, uh, hi everybody. Welcome to the uh, first session of our new D&D campaign here. Really looking forward to this. Uh, why don't we start by having everyone introduce their character? All right, well, uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, I'm gonna be playing Belisariana Corinshire. She's a half-gnome, half-tiefling warlock who I'll be multiclassing into Decker at level three. Uh, yeah, I know it's a Shadowrun class, but I found a good 5e adaptation on some blog. Her patron is the ghost of her daughter that follows her around everywhere. And while her daughter is actually still alive in the present, this is her daughter's ghost that travels here from the future after she dies at the age of 72. So it's an old ghost and it can tell her the future. Also, uh, Belisariana is the rightful queen of Arishi, but uh, she got amnesia after an incident involving a beholder on the plane of shadow. So that's why she's level one. All right, so the example I gave is probably a bit extreme, but uh, maybe some of you actually think there's nothing wrong with it. That's, that's totally possible. But what is a snowflake character? Most people seem to agree that a snowflake character is one that is so unique that the character or backstory seems attention-seeking. A character that seems to demand a lot of the attention of the campaign just by the nature of who it is. So for the purposes of this video, know that I think a unique character is totally fine. But when the uniqueness becomes a problem, we've stepped into special snowflake territory in my mind. You might disagree with that label, but that's what I'm gonna be using for this video. Now, back in the Gilded Age in the US, men like Andrew Carnegie and JD Rockefeller became extremely wealthy and powerful. Were these men captains of industry, championing American values of hard work and providing jobs and products and contributing to the good of the country? Or were they robber barons, corrupt industrialists who got rich on the backs of the poor, creating harmful monopolies and sucking people dry? Captains of industry or robber barons? Unique character or special snowflake? It's often a matter of perspective. Personally, I think it largely comes down to how the character is played by the player. If the player's intent is to have the world revolve around this character, they're a special snowflake, and the DM should arrange for a snowflake-eating dragon to swoop down and eat it up as soon as possible. They can also become a special snowflake because of how the dungeon master treats the character, though. The DM ultimately decides whether or not the story will revolve around the special snowflake. But whether you love these characters and simply see them as unique, or whether you get the shivers anytime you catch a glimpse of snowflakiness, in this video I hope to talk about the good that can come from these characters, the things that make them unique, special, interesting. These are good things. And then I also hope to explain some of the potential pitfalls when making a really unique character. In other words, we'll talk about some of the reasons these characters and the way they're treated by the player and the DM can elicit groans and face palms all around. And that's not what we want when we play D&D. The end goal should be the fun of the group, and that involves making a good character, one that goes well with the group and the game the DM is running. Before we get any further, I also want to thank my sponsor for this video, Ingram Woodworks, who's currently kickstarting an awesome product called the Tome of Holding. It's a finely crafted and highly customizable RPG storage case and dice rolling tray with an absolutely beautiful cover. I actually had a chance to use mine at a local convention a couple weeks ago to hold some of my DM goodies and they performed well and got lots of compliments. So you'll definitely want to check out the Tome of Holding on Kickstarter. There's a link down in the video description. So let's jump into our special snowflake discussion by first talking about the good of unique characters. A unique character concept is a good thing. Now, some of you probably know I'm a big fan of tropes. I, I think you can play a dwarf fighter with a battle axe and a Scottish accent, this stereotypical character, and it can be a great character. The key to a good character in my mind is making them believable, making them more than just a meat shield, but giving them some personality, some strengths and weaknesses, some flaws, and all that stuff. Role play in a way that makes them three-dimensional, and they'll be a good character. And yet I know for a lot of us, it's also fun to twist the norm and stray away from the tropes. 
Instead of an aged human wizard with a white beard, what if you have a half-orc wizard who is horrified by the rather brutish ways of the orcs, and is bookish and sophisticated, and likes a good cup of tea? A barbarian who gets queasy at the sight of blood, or a wood elf who prefers urban living, or wants to sail the high seas? In the Winds of Sir Selene campaign on Be a Better Game Master, my friend Matt played a character who was a gnomish warlock. The character was mute, but he had an owl familiar, and he and the owl had a special connection which allowed the owl to speak for him. I thought it was super cool and unique, and, and rather than consume a lot of the attention, it just became something the players and viewers got used to. It didn't demand more attention than the other characters, and didn't give his character any kind of mechanical advantage. Now let's talk about the good in the unique backstory. The backstory goes hand in hand with the character concept. This is the why. Why does your wood elf prefer urban living or want to sail the high seas? What has set them on that course? A character who is an utter foreigner in the game world can make them unique, as can a dark past or a wild family history. A unique backstory can be great and can help make for an interesting character. It can even be really cool to tie your character into the campaign storyline in a way that makes them unique. Maybe you're the nephew of a noble who is a central figure in the campaign. This gives the DM some great hooks, and it's a character that can easily be played without hogging the spotlight. However, when making a unique character concept or forming a unique backstory, there are some pitfalls that I'll try to steer you clear from. Caution, the character concept. Your character concept needs to make sense in the campaign. Ask your DM if it fits, but don't annoy your DM by pressing the limits on race, class, equipment, everything. It may be okay to make a case for a unique race that your DM doesn't envision in this world, and it might be okay to ask about a homebrew class you found if it seems balanced and seems to fit the game world or campaign. But don't push it too hard, asking for things that will give you significantly more mechanical power or power over the narrative. Be sensitive to having a character concept that is balanced and not overly attention-grabbing. There are many ways you can make a unique character that will fit within the limits your DM has set, and a lot of what will make the character unique is how you play them. Here and there, take it as a challenge to make a character that would normally seem tropey unique in the game just by how you play that character. I think you'll find it rewarding. Caution the backstory. There is danger on two fronts when creating a backstory. One, making a character backstory that seems to demand attention. The character who is actually a powerful queen and just doesn't know it strays pretty close to that line. Or perhaps the chosen one type of character, like a Luke Skywalker or Rand Thor in The Wheel of Time. The point is, don't let your backstory make you more special than the other characters. Does your backstory leave space for the other characters to get their turn in the spotlight? Now, maybe all the characters in your campaign have backstories like this. In that case, you could have multiple special snowflakes, and therefore none of them are really special snowflakes. They're all just equally unique, and if the players are okay with sharing the spotlight, you're good. And also remember, a lot of it just comes down to the way you play the character. I'm gonna keep hitting this point home. The snowflake is usually more of a player problem than a backstory problem. The second danger I want to mention in the backstory, and this isn't necessarily true of just the snowflakey characters, is having a backstory that's too detailed. Personally, I prefer when characters have some kind of backstory, but often they don't have to have much for session one. Even a couple sentences is a good start, and we flesh it out as we play. One of our goals when we sit down at the table together is to tell a good story, and this becomes more difficult when there's so much detailed information about interesting things that have already happened to your character. This is a matter of taste, but I prefer a backstory that's on the shorter side, so we can ensure the most dramatic events in your character's life are told at the table, with dice and companions who can also contribute to the story. It's also totally fine to build on the backstory as you play. You can start really vague, but your backstory can continue to build as you and the players learn more and more about the world you're playing in. Ideally, fleshing out your backstory is a collaborative effort between DMs and players. You might learn about a really cool shadowy organization in session five of the campaign, let's say, and you can work with your DM to determine that your family has some history with this faction. This makes for great stories and hooks, and it's the sort of thing that becomes harder to tweak if you've already written the novel of your character's first 30 years of life. 
To conclude, have fun making unique characters, but do your best not to cross that line into special snowflake territory. So what do you think? Are special snowflake characters a concern at your table, or do you find the ultra unique totally manageable? Hopefully more than hearing about snowflakey characters, you've learned some tips that can help you create really good characters. And I welcome your tips, your advice, your disagreement, and of course, uh, snowflake stories. Yes, please leave them all down in the comments below. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. I also want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their support of this channel. Patrons are people who give to the channel on a monthly basis. There's some pretty cool rewards for becoming a patron, and you just know that you're supporting me in my work and helping me feed my family and all that good stuff. I also want to remind you to check out Ingram Woodwork's Tome of Holding down in the video description. There's a link to that. Thanks again, guys. Everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.